What's up guys and welcome to my video. This video is all about power supplies and is in fact a simple guide to buying a power supply. Now the main thing when buying a power supply is not to buy the right power supply for your computer now, it's to decide what your computer is now and if you're going to do anything to it later. The main thing being that if you're going to throw an extra graphics card in an SLI later down the line, then you're going to have to make sure you've got enough power for that. Even if it's not extra graphics cards, everything in your computer uses power. Whether it's extra drives, extra optical drives or anything else, it's going to need extra power. So just make sure you're buying the right power supply for your computer, not now, but your computer in two or three years time. Now one of my biggest tips would be to choose your power supply as your last component. Once you've decided everything else from your case through to your motherboard, processor and graphics card, choose your power supply last. This way you'll know what sort of computer you will have and what sort of power you will need. The next thing to do is then to use a power supply calculator and actually work out how much power they think you're going to need. Note that these aren't 100% accurate and although they give you a recommended wattage, I'd always recommend going higher than that recommended wattage anyway. So if they recommend a 550 watt power supply, maybe look at getting between 600 and 700 watt power supply. Now power supplies come in two different forms modular and non-modular. Now most standard power supplies are non-modular. What this means is that you've got your actual power supply block, all the cables are physically attached onto the box itself and you can't take them out. And because you've got all these cables for loads of different applications, then it's almost 100% likely that you're not going to be using every single connector. So if you buy a non-modular power supply, then you're going to have a lot of spare cables that you're going to have to stick somewhere in your case which can block airflow and can make it look untidy. So if you don't want a mess inside your computer, then you're going to want to look at a modular power supply. Now, modular power supplies, again, come in two forms. There's a semi-modular power supply, and then there's a fully modular power supply. Now, a semi-modular power supply comes with half the cables attached and half them separate. Now, the idea of a semi-modular power supply is that all the cables that come actually attached to the power supply, you're going to need to use anyway. So there's no point adding extra cost or adding extra cables in the box, in theory, because you're going to be using them anyway. And all the other cables, you can choose which ones you need. If you're only running one graphics card, then you don't need the cables to run two. And the same applies to everything else in your computer. If you don't have eight drives, then you don't need eight SATA connectors. A fully modular power supply, however, is, as you'd expect, fully modular. Every single cable on that can be detached and plugged back in. Now these are the most ideal because you literally only use the cables you need to use and the more expensive ones comes with different lengths of power supply as well. So if you need a really long cable for a really big case then you use the long cable that comes supplied. If you only have a small ITX case then you only use the tiniest one that comes with it. However, semi and fully modular power supplies do come at the disadvantage that they can be bigger and might not fit in really small ITX cases. And of course the other problem is price. Modular power supplies are more expensive because there's extra work to be done by the manufacturer and this will cost you more money. But the higher quality power supplies are usually modular anyway once you start getting quite high end. If you're going to be going for a high performance power supply then it may be a modular version anyway. So it's pretty much a case of do you want your case to be a bit cleaner and have better airflow or do you want to save some extra money on something that realistically doesn't matter so much assuming you've got the time and patience to actually hide those cables. When looking for a power supply you want to get one that has single 12 volt rails. Without going into too much detail, this basically means that things like graphics cards and things that use the 12 volt rail are actually going to get the power they need without risk of failure. The cheaper power supplies usually use multiple rails and this can fail and is not so good for using higher end graphics cards. Also note the efficiency rating of power supplies. Cheaper power supplies will be less efficient. So for example, if you need them to draw 500 watts, they may be drawing 750 watts out of your wall which is going to cost you extra money in the long run on your electricity bills. The rating that they use is called 80 plus and as you'd guess it means they have over 80% efficiency. You have different colours that will tell you the different sorts of efficiencies. It starts at 80 plus, then 80 plus bronze, then 80 plus silver and 80 plus gold followed by 80 plus platinum. So it may be wise to spend a little bit more now and get a better efficiency and save you more money in the long run. And if they're more efficient then they're actually probably better built anyway and may last longer but of course that will depend on the model in question. So now you know the wattage you need, you know whether you want a modular, semi-modular or fully modular power supply and you also know what sort of efficiency you're going for. 
Of course, if you want a really high wattage one with really high efficiency that's modular, it is going to cost you a lot of money. Definitely over £100 for the really high-end ones. It's better to get a better power supply than you need, than later down the line realising that you need a better one than you've actually got. But now you've got an idea of what you want, it's time to look at reviews. Always look at reviews, not just consumer reviews. Consumer reviews tell you what people think but these people won't have loads of different power supplies to test. So do look at reviews from other websites that will tell you how good they are relative to other power supplies. Also look at warranties, because different manufacturers have different warranties, and these different warranties are pretty much an indication of how confident they are that their product isn't going to break. And for something as crucial as a power supply, it's something you're going to want to get right, and it's something that you really don't want to break down on you. So by now you should know what power supply you want. Please, please, please take my advice when I say that you should really think about the future and what your computer might turn into at a later date. It's much better to buy a power supply that allows you to do extra things later on than to be limited later on just because you don't want to have to buy a new power supply. Thank you very much for watching this video. Why not subscribe to PC Centric for more simple guides and all sorts of other computer and technology related videos. Thank you very much for watching guys.